Hey plant friends, welcome back to the Planty Wedding Series. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. I hope you liked last week's video and all of the podcast content that we've been creating for you. Last week's video was eight different ways to incorporate houseplants into your wedding. We had a podcast episode that's 26 different ways. We've had DIY projects getting featured left and white. It is the Planty Wedding or the Botanically Inspired Wedding festival, I feel like, on, on Bloom and Grow this month. And this week we have another amazing video, actually with a guest. So this week on the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast, I interviewed Karina of The Botanist. She was my florist for my wedding all about, uh, it's like a wedding flower crash course for to be wed. So if you are about to plan a wedding um, or do a big event that has a floral budget, this kind of goes through your whole process of what to expect and, and gives some great insight in what to better understand from a florist perspective and from a to be wed perspective of like what you need to know when figuring this out. And obviously, how do you kind of bring our passion for plants and house plants into a floral budget and floral design, which Karina did an amazing job. Before you watch this video, I actually highly suggest listening to the podcast. It's 90 minutes. Karina and I talk for 90 minutes about wedding flowers, but we talk about a lot of stuff that Karina actually demonstrates for us in this video. So Karina kindly actually made and produced this video that I'm about to show you, and it's her in her floral shop arranging a bridal bouquet. And in it, it was so fun to watch because I'm, I'm remembering the conversation that we had for the podcast and seeing all of these elements that she talks about, like how she cuts these stems, how she arranges it, how, you know, palette comes into mind. So anyway, it's a great podcast episode, 90 full minutes of content and information. This is a really fun video that Karina made for us that I hope you enjoy. So here's Karina with her wedding bouquet assembly tutorial. Hi, I'm Karina and I'm the owner of the botanist and I'm going to show you today how to do a bridal bouquet. What I'm going to do is I'm doing something that is trending a lot these days. I wouldn't say that it's the number one style. I'm half British, so my style is sort of fresh from the garden. Um, but that said, I think California carried this trend and it's become something that's much more widely spread where now people, especially during times of harvest, and right now it's November in New England, um, really like bleached out pieces, um, which is a new way of making something look autumnal and harvest-like, which I also have to say I do like as well. So I'm going to do a bridal bouquet in that style for a bride that we have this weekend. So whenever you do a bridal bouquet, it's important to start with the greens. That's always going to be the base for almost any arrangement. Um, and when I choose the pieces, I like to choose ones that are quite slender because um, you obviously don't want them to overtake the arrangement. Now this is going to be a unique piece in the sense that she just wants whites and bleached out pieces. So. I think that a style that I've been into for a while, and I think a style that is something that most people are into at this stage, um, is a lot of people like something that's fairly organic in shape. So for example, most of the pieces on here are actually too big to use, so I'm just cutting a few side pieces, and this is seeded eucalyptus. Um, and this is something that is very popular with lots of people. And then this is a slapia. And it's not something that we have access to year round, but I love it. And the reason why I love it for this time of year is I do feel that it has, it has almost a beach feel, but it also has a sort of dried and harvest feel. So a little bit of this will go a long way. And for someone who wants something that sort of whites and bleached out, it's a strong place to start. So what I'm going to do is put together this unusual mix of greens. And the reason why I'm cutting everything from bases is because what we want is we want a smooth runway for the hands to have. We don't want any leaves at the base. And then normally if I was doing a bridal bouquet, I would use more greens for a base. Um, but because this is a special request, we are going to be doing fewer greens than I would normally do um, and using more unusual and unique pieces. But I feel as though because this is such a of the moment look that it would be nice for people to see. So I feel as though this is enough of the greens already, what's happening right there. So I'm going to start to add in my flowers. 
And what you want when you're doing arrangements is you want to have some water. I don't usually have water go up too tall because I want all the ends to go down to the base. And that's because then when we ribbon it, it won't be affected by the fact that there's ribbon up here and it won't touch anything. So some people put things together in a handheld arrangement. I like to just put it together and then work with it and then hold it up in a mirror. There's two different ways to do it. You could do either, but I find it's most relaxed to do it this way. Again, you'll notice I'm cutting off these little edges because we don't want it to be sharp for her hand. So we're going to also have things like hydrangea in there. Um, I don't think we need to have too much hydrangea, but I think just a little bit will add in that white feeling. Whenever I'm using anything, I always make sure that I take off any of the discolored leaves. To me, that's very important. What I like to do stylistically, especially if I'm using a hydrangea, is not have it be too large. I don't think that it needs to take up too much space. Um, so some of you might think I really took that down, but I just, I don't want it to be too much taking up space. But then what's nice is that we have this piece and this is bleached out amaranth. And we can then put that over. I'm gonna put in some hypericum berries. What I enjoy is once somebody lets me know what scheme they would like, is then seeing how far in that direction we can go. So we have a lot of different white pieces that we can put into this. And I think that variety is the spice of life. I think that things look really gorgeous when there's a lot of variety as long as it's tastefully done. You don't want to do something that is just a random assortment of different colors or of different shapes and textures. This is stock. Stock has this almost, kind of, how can I describe it? It's almost powdery um, when you smell it, but in a weird way, a lot of people like it. This is another bleached out piece. Bleached out pieces, we've been doing them now for a few years. They're definitely becoming more mainstream. These are okay. I know that people are very into them. My issue with them is I don't want them blowing all over the place and getting caught in people's hair. Um, so I'll put them in, but I don't love using them in these pieces. But I also want to give people what they'd like. Now this is status. I wouldn't normally use status. Um, I find status looks a little bit dry, but that is a little bit what's happening in this arrangement. There's a fine line between bleached out pieces and dry. So fine line, I shouldn't say there's a fine line. There's, that's what it is really. Um, so I'm using it for this particular arrangement. It's not something I would always use. And then this is Queen Anne's Lace. Put that there. A little Scaviosa. And then I also don't use wax flour all that often in arrangements for brides. I know that a lot of people like it, but I have a real theory of open doubt, keep it out, but I think it goes particularly with this theme. So we'll pop that in. But then I also like a little bit of lushness. So I really enjoy white dolphinium. So definitely put this in. And it also brings some good texture and some height. And then this is not necessarily what I think one would think to put in, but I really enjoy this and this is very much of the times. Um, you can't get this kind of ranunculus all year round. It seems to show up just at certain moments. So when it does show up, I don't want it. This is Genestra, same thing with Genestra. You can often get it around February, but it certainly isn't on tap all year round. Um, not something I would always use, but I feel it's something that works with this. And it also smells really good. So this is this bleached out Ruscus. This is one of the main pieces that we'll use for this. But again, this is a very stylistically sort of, they're quite spiky. So I like using things that are a little bit softer sometimes. Um, but this is specifically what our bride had asked for. So if we're using it, we're putting it in. But I'm mixing it in with other things as well. Like this ranunculus, I adore ranunculus. Most people enjoy ranunculus. That. I use a rose. 
Not all roses smell these days. It's because they've taken out the oil because it makes it last longer without it. So we'll pop that in there. And then from time to time when I'm doing a bridal bouquet, and you'll notice it's quite smooth down here, I'll hold it up to see how it's going. So I have a mirror beyond this. Just to see, does it work? It gives you a little bit more perspective. Do a little bit of white spray rose. So whenever you're using spray roses, you want to take off any of the outside petals if they're not in good shape. And I always take off the greens. And then I'm also really careful to take off even any little nubs that might be there. So pop that in. edge. And then this is an anemone. I adore anemones. This will flare open and have a black center by tomorrow. I'm taking off some of these greens because we don't want too many greens happening with this. You can see in there a little black center. I don't always use anemones, but for this spread I think it works. We're going to add some more berries. I don't always repeat things either, but again this is such a specific unusual composition. Pop that in. You don't have to slice berries up the stem for a bridal bouquet because they only need to, tomorrow is their day to shine, but it makes them last longer in general. So I like to. Let's see, we'll add in a little bit more Lysianthus. So the thing about Lysianthus is it's lovely, it's very bridal, but I also, it's a bit fragile. So when you do use it, you want to have it inside in the center to protect it. So it doesn't break. So let's see what else we have. We'll pop in a touch more eucalyptus because I feel as though we just need a little bit more shape. The picture of what she sent to me was decent in size. So we're not trying to do too petite something. So I'm really excited about this. Berries. And then I'm going to trim this a little bit back. It's really important to just make sure that there's nothing that's sticking out too much. Even that, I'm going to trim this a little bit back. Editing is a huge part of doing flowers. There we are. We're going to do two pieces of this. Again, I don't use this normally for battle bouquets, but this is in line and stuff with what she wants. So, got this. I think it's starting to come together. I'd like a few more pops of white. This I'm putting in because it's giving more texture. It's not quite white, but I think it's enough in the family that I think that that will feel good for her. And again, all that we're trying to do is just create something that feels good. For our bride. It's got to be made with love. I tried very hard to not feed into the attitude that um, somehow has been created at Bridezilla. I don't think that it makes any sense to think like that. Um, I think I'm an obsessive person and I certainly would care a lot about my wedding flowers. And I think that it's natural to care so much about your flowers. And for the most part, we don't experience people who would be called red cells. And I think that's partly just because that's not the attitude that we take with us um, from start to finish. So I do think that that is also important. You wanna have a good relationship with your flowers and you wanna trust her and know that she has your best interest at heart and is taking it seriously. Um, I'm including this because I know that this is something that I think that she's into. What I like about this is all the different textures that are happening. So then this is a bit of a wild card. This right here. I'm going to add a touch more genestra just to give it a little bit more height. So for this thing here, this is a bit of heather actually purple but when you look at it and it's mixing with white it just comes off as another white dried bit um, and I think it works for this composition 
but I don't want too much of it. And I don't want anything down on the edges. So I'm just going to take that, pop it in. And then I'm going to add this in, even though this is a little bit wild, because I just think it looks pretty and I think it adds to it. And I think that for her, we can have a little bit of extra green in there. Everything else has a bit more brown. Um, and if for some reason when I show up, I'll say to her, do you like that? Or do you want me to just trim that back? So I go by if in doubt, keep it out. Um, the fact that I'm on the fence about it in certain ways, if I wasn't going to be there and on site, then I would just take it out. But I do kind of think that it brings a little bit of life to it and also makes it look gorgeous. So here's that. I'm going to add just the tiniest bit more another ranunculus same thing you want to put ranunculus a little bit more on the inside edge rather than risking it um, because you want to make sure the stem doesn't break and then i've got one more rose pulling off any of the petals on the outside that have opened up too much for bridal work especially it's really important to obsessively make sure everything is in a good place. Let's pop this in. And then I'm gonna just follow up with another piece of viscous. So I often just will make something that has only one element. Um, you know, I only put one flower in of each different kind, and I use lots of different flowers. But for this piece in particular, I think that a few repeats almost adds to it. And again, you'll notice I'm cutting off a little bit of the stems because we don't want it to be too tall and too in her face and we want the stems to be smooth and sleek. And I'm also going to put this in with these berries to give the berries a little bit of, um, so they're not draping too much. She didn't want it cascading. So you can play the flowers off of one another. Okay. So here we are. I think this is looking pretty bridal. Probably what I might do, because I do believe in editing, is this right here. It seems to me like it's kind of in the way. So I'm going to cut it back. Um, I think as an artist, you become a little bit more trained and it's not so hard to sort of tell and feel when it feels as though something's a little bit too much. I'm going to go gently as I cut it back out so that it's not, I completely eliminate it. But there, I feel as though that's a little bit just was feeling too dominant, too central. So I might put in one of these because again, this is very harvest. We're at the first week of November right now in New England, which is kind of prime time for wedding season these days. So we've got that. So we have that. And then I'm gonna close her out by adding two more elements. I'm gonna put in one more scaviosa which I think just brings in a little something extra. I'm going to add one more touch of this Lysianthus. And I take the greens off because I think that it just looks sleeker and cleaner. So we have that. Pop her in the center. Maybe one more of these. I need something. I can feel when a piece is done and I can feel it needs something else. Is it a hydrangea? Maybe it is, but I'm going to cut the hydrangea back. We don't want to use too much. Just a little. I think it's good. I think this hydrangea over here is maybe a little too full. Cut her back slightly. And this delphinium, for some reason, is looking a little bit big. There. 
I think that we are covered. I am not sure about these berries. And so if I'm not sure what I'm going to do is I'm already going to cut them back a little bit. Okay, I feel good about this. This part is an unusually draping part, so I'm gonna just slightly loop it up a little bit. And there, I think that this looks very bridal, harvest-like, and ready to go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my station ever so slightly, and I'll even show you how we ribbon the things up. Everyone has their own technique of how to go about doing something like this. I think keeping it simple is often the way. For this, what we're doing is you go through and you just make sure the stems are completely clear. I like to put on rubber band. The reason why I like that is that it just makes it tight. It's even an art rubber banding, something like this. It's not as simple as one might think. So you have to kind of get it around everything without breaking anything. I very much recommend doing two sets of rubber bands, especially if you're ever doing something for brides, because I think that you really want it to be secure. You don't want to be playing around with that. Um, again, this is one layer, um, but I still would recommend it. So I always have at least two rubber bands. Pop them up. And then you put on this green tape as the underlay. So we have that. Okay. So my favorite green to use is this light green. And the reason for that is well, one, it's my favorite color, but also I like it because it really blends in with the stems. So with that said, what you do is you roll it around and you put it on almost as if you were doing a tennis racket or bike handles. So you slightly stretch it out. And the point of this is it just creates a smoother base to put the ribbon on. And here we are. And you can either do it once or you can do multiple. We're just gonna use this simple white burlap, which I also think is really pretty for this look. So, I'm in favor of doing the diagonal cut. I also, I'm not saying anything that profound, but I very much would recommend using ribbon scissors. Um, so I'm gonna just trying to think how I'm going to go about doing it. There's different ways to do it, but tonight I'm going to do a wrap tie. So what that entails is I basically take it, this is such thick ribbon, and then I'm going to wrap it around one on the top, and then one down on the bottom, and this is such thick ribbon, and then I'm just gonna tie it. And there's a special tie where you go right over left, left over right, and that will give it a really tight tie. So go like that. So that was right over left, now left over right. Tie it. And then I'm gonna cut this one ever so slightly. I'm also going to make sure that none of the metal on the ribbon is sticking out. And then there we have it. And so I also think I can still edit back. So these two pieces right here that are sort of bouncing off, some people might be into it, but my instinct says to edit it. So it's out of there. There. Now we have a bridal bouquet. Okay. And if you'd like, what you can do is you can cut the ends to make it a little bit more uniform. So the last and final piece is to go through, cut them off. And then what we'll do is we'll keep it in the cooler overnight. And then we will change the water out tomorrow before we bring it on site. And then that's it. That is a bridal bouquet. And of course, we'll check on it and make sure that everything is in perfect condition tomorrow, but there's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't be. So, have that.
and then for the night, just pop it in there. And I'm even going to pour out a tiny bit more water. There. So the ribbon stays dry, but the flowers are elevated in water for the night. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Karina. I think that bouquet was really cool and chic and modern and honestly so different from my bouquet, um, but it was so cool. I loved all of those white elements. Um, here is a photo of my bouquet in case you were curious to see what Karina ended up making for me. You can also watch last week's video. There's tons of photos superimposed over my vlog that kind of give you a sneak peek into what our wedding looked like. Um, and if you liked this video, make sure that you like it and you give it two thumbs up and you comment on the video and you do all the things that you're supposed to do when you're watching a YouTube video, you guys know. And if you are interested in the intersection of plants and weddings or plants and life events or just large scale celebrations, make sure that you check out the Planty Wedding series. We had the Wedding Flower Crash Course this week. Last week we had a whole like million ways you can incorporate houseplants into your wedding. The week before we featured three DIY projects that you could do that live on forever. This green wall being one of them, this was a green wall at my wedding for selfies and photos that I repurposed into my YouTube and Zoom background. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the series. Uh, we will be back to our regularly scheduled planty interview style content later. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the sneak peek into my wedding. And until next time, sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs>